About two months ago, I made a video talking about my struggle with making friends. And my first instinct when posting that video was, who's going to want to watch this? I didn't think it would be interesting enough. But on the flip side, I also knew there was potential for this video to do well, based on the fact that I had seen other similar videos on YouTube pick up. The first one I ever watched was of this girl called Myra West. 21 years old, I have no friends. The video has no fancy film setup, there's no fancy editing, it's literally just this girl talking about how she has no friends. And it randomly came up on my YouTube homepage because apparently YouTube knows that I'm a bit of a loner. Not long after, I got recommended another video, and then another, and then another. Okay YouTube, I get it, I have no friends, you don't need to rub it in. It took me a YouTube search of no friends to realise just how many videos like this existed. But that's not even the surprising part. The surprising part is just how many views these videos get. Even channels which don't have many subscribers or that are relatively new have thousands of views on these videos. So it's like the algorithm just picks up these videos and they completely blow up. So are we just jumping on a trend here? Well, based on my own experiences, when I was posting that video, I know how hard it was to do. It was very personal. And to be honest, no one wants to go online to admit to the rest of the world that they have no friends. It's kind of embarrassing. And to be honest, it's something that I've carried a lot of shame over. It's something that I've tried to hide in my real life. But the views on these videos, the views tell me something completely different. It's not the creator jumping on a trend or trying to create the trend. It's almost like having no friends is the trend. And maybe trend is the wrong word. I think it's an epidemic. And the worst part of it, I feel like it's not even that we all feel alone. We also feel like we're all alone in experiencing this. But surely these videos and the fact that they have so many views proves otherwise. It was absolutely crazy for me to see how many people connected to my story. A story that to be honest, I thought I was so alone in. And I was also really shocked and to be honest, really confused that I got so many Instagram DMs saying that they really related to it. And when I clicked on these people's profiles, for some of those people, their feeds presented a completely different story. They looked like they had loads of friends and they looked like the kind of people that I used to compare myself to in terms of my social life. And I'm not going to lie, I was quite comforted by that. So this isn't about social anxiety because my previous video was really about social anxiety. I feel like this is a more widespread issue. I feel like a lot of people are struggling with the fact that they have no friends or feel quite alone. So how did we get here guys? Why do so many of us feel like we're alone? Why do so many of us struggle with loneliness that we watch or create videos about having no friends? I think the first thing is that we've been completely misled. I think we all have expectations for what we think friendships should look like, and I think we can blame the media for this. First, there's the traditional media. We grew up watching six friends who always hang out at the coffee house and who don't seem to need any other friends. Even over 10 years with breakups, marriages, career changes or kids, the six of them forever stay constant and their friendships don't change. And God bless that show, I have it on the background, it's always on repeat, but I also know how unrealistic it is. I think it's really rare that we'll stay best friends with the people that we went to school with, or that we'll become best friends with our flatmates, or that as we experience major changes in our lives, that the dynamics of our friendships wouldn't change. I mean, I'm sure it is possible, I just don't think it's as easy as the show makes out. And how many movies have we watched where the main character, even someone who is somewhat of an outcast and isn't inherently seen as popular, has a best friend? And how many movies have we seen where you're sure to get friends based on your similarities, whether that's how you look, your culture, how athletic you are, or hobbies? So these are the stories that we grew up around, and even though we know they're fiction, we know they're not real, I'm sure in some way they fed our beliefs about what our friendship should look like as we get older. And then there's social media, and I want to ask you a question because it's something that I've been really thinking about. When do you post on Instagram stories? Is it when you're by yourself, reading a book, or watching TV, or is it when you're out socialising? I'm guessing that it's when you're out socialising, and I feel like a lot of us seem to show that on Instagram, even if it's only 2% of our real life. So now I realise that everyone else is exactly the same. We tend to hop on social media when we're actually being social, and instead we consume social media when we're by ourselves. So do you see what I'm saying? I feel like social media really distorts how social we all actually are. It makes it seem like we're all socializing all of the time because that's when we tend to post. And because we're around social media all of the time, it seems like everyone is socializing all of the time. And so because of that, that set the standard for what we think our social life should look like, but it's not actually realistic. Social media has also changed the way that we socialize. So it's really strange to think about it, but social media hasn't actually been around that long. I remember using it from the age of 16, so that's about 12 years. And before that, we socialised in completely different ways. And even our parents and our grandparents socialised in completely different ways to what we do now. I remember before the age of 16, after school, I would go home and I'd sit on the phone for an hour to my friends. 
But now, because we have so much constant communication, we almost don't need to do that. We don't really have to pick up the phone because we can very easily send a DM or a WhatsApp message. And even when we get bored at home, instead of filling our time by talking to people, we know that we can just watch Netflix or hop online. So I think social media is great when it gives you the ability to connect with people who you wouldn't be able to otherwise in real life, like people who live on the opposite side of the world. But when it comes to people that we know in our real lives, I just don't think social media is very social. And it's such a shame because I feel like social media has infiltrated our lives in such a pivotal way that it's almost become too much of an effort to socialise in the normal way. And the final reason why I think a lot of us feel alone, and this might be hard to hear, I think it's because of us. I don't want to blame just the media for the way that we're feeling. I also think we have to take responsibility and think about how we've caused things or how we haven't helped things. There are definitely some things that are outside of our control. Like I can't control the fact that my friends cut me out at 18. But being brutally honest with myself, I can also see how in the past I've put my relationship before friendships or my career before my friendships. I think a major part of it is that so many of us are so used to instant gratification. So we are so used to just meeting people for the first time and them instantly adding us on social media, liking and commenting on our photos. And even in other areas of our lives, we're so used to instant gratification that I feel like we've just forgotten how much effort is actually required for things. I've honestly come to realize that friendships require just as much effort as a relationship with a partner. I feel like it's so different to family because with family, no matter what, you are family, but friends can easily drift, friends can easily move on. So you do need some sort of consistent effort there. I also think so many of us are really focused on where we're going in life and developing ourselves. I feel like a lot of us really do work on our habits and our goals and things like that, which is great, but it is really hard to balance everything. So of course something has to give. And I feel like so often that means socializing and friendships. I've definitely been guilty of this, but I also see it in a lot of other people. I just feel like everyone is so focused on their own life and where they're going. So I think a mix of these three reasons are how we got to this epidemic. So where do we go now? How do we cure this epidemic? How do we stop feeling so alone? Well, I don't think I have all of the answers, but here's what I've realized or I'm trying to realize. It's not always personal. So I know I said that one of the reasons why we all feel alone is because of us. I mean us, so I mean everyone, or at least the majority of people. So you can really flip that on the head. In the same way that you get too busy to reply to others, in the same way others get too busy to reply to you. Friends the TV show doesn't show them being at their jobs for eight hours a day, or having to clean the flat, or having to go grocery shopping, or working on side hustles, or making time for their partners or families, or even having alone time. We all have lives and we all have so much going on. I know someone who has a chronic illness who doesn't talk about it very much, but I know for sure that it impacts the way that she socializes. My patients who come in are trying to juggle their jobs with having kids and taking their kids to all sorts of classes. And I wonder how they make time to go to the dentist, let alone make time to socialize. Sometimes we just have to realize that we are all quite busy in our own lives and we're not constantly available to socialize. But that doesn't mean that we can't have good friends. I think it just goes back to what I was saying earlier in this video about expectations. I think if we were able to manage our expectations for what friendships look like and what they are, then we can realize that we are actually capable of having real and attainable friendships. And maybe we already have those friendships in our lives, but we just don't realize that based on what we think our friendship should look like. So maybe you do have friends, but you live in a different city, or you drink and your friend doesn't drink, or you have one friend versus a big friendship group, or you can only talk to your friend every so often. It doesn't mean that you don't have friends. It doesn't mean that person isn't there for you. I also think it's really important to find the right people. If you feel alone or you feel like you don't have many friends, you're probably looking at yourself and thinking, what's wrong with me? And trust me, I get that, I've been there. But I also think that not everyone is meant to be our friend. I now look back at some of the friendships that I've lost in the past and I'm actually quite glad, not in a mean way, but I can now understand how those friendships just weren't right for me. I feel like it's the same with relationships. So we might have dated people in the past, but they're not the right person for us. And so like that with friendships, I feel like you have to test the waters, put yourself out there and maybe go through multiple breakups until you find the right person. And the other thing that I've realized is friendships are a two way street. I've now stopped blaming myself solely if a friendship doesn't work out because it takes two people to create a friendship and maintain it. So obviously I want to do my bit, but if I feel like I've done my bit and it's not enough, then I have to make peace with that. Understanding that you want the right people around you is honestly so liberating. I feel like sometimes you really are better off without people if they're not there for you and they don't really care about you. Put yourself out there. When you do the same things and you go to the same places, you're going to be surrounded by the same people and get the same sort of results. So if you only go to work and come straight back and then you're at home all of the time, you're only really going to meet people that you meet at work. So how do you put yourself out there? 
I've honestly tried so many different things. I've tried going to all sorts of classes and I've even tried friendship apps. But here's what I've realized. Putting yourself out there for the sole purpose of making friends is actually very, very difficult because making friends takes a lot of time. And it's very hard to consistently put yourself out there when it's so uncomfortable to do. So instead I've realized that the best way to do this is to put yourself out there in a way that you already want to grow outside of friendships. So for example, I want to start art again. So I could very easily start going to art classes to develop those skills. I might meet people there and I might become friends with them, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going there for the art. However, it does increase my chances of finding my tribe. And this is exactly what happened with YouTube. So I started YouTube for me, it had nothing to do with meeting people because I didn't even know that you could meet people through YouTube. And so meeting people through that community and making friends was actually a very pleasant surprise, but it was an easier thing to do because I was focused on YouTube rather than making friends. Accept change. If you get married, things might change. If you have kids, things might change. If you move, things might change. I really do believe that sometimes people are only meant to be in our lives for a certain part of it rather than all of it. People definitely do come and go. I know some people who are really desperate to cling on to friendships that they had back at school, even if their values no longer align. But I do think there sometimes is beauty in letting go and making space for something else. There's this quote by Naval which says, life is a single player game. And to some degree, I definitely agree with that. Hopefully we will be around other people all of the time, but ultimately we are the constant. Everything else around us can change. I definitely recognize phases in my life where I've had friends and phases in my life where I've not had friends. But if I can accept change in the form of losing friends, it also means that I can accept change where I can meet new people and make friends. So I feel like it's a balance of being realistic and being hopeful. If you're in a similar boat as I am and you've struggled with making friends or a sense of belonging or being alone, I really do hope this video helps. Ultimately, I feel like we can all take comfort in the fact that a lot of people feel this way. It's not you. So I'll see you guys in the next one.